Hello. Today's April 19th, and it is Good Friday. And it's a good Friday because the news is here, too. What's so good about it? Just as the day Jesus was put on the cross in the well, Christian faith. That doesn't seem good. Well, it's, it's, the sacrifice part is good. The actual right. part was pretty brutal when they put him on the cross. But well, You know, the, what was it he said? That, like, you're going to... Uh, it's like you live by the sword, you die by the sword. I mean, mm-hmm. that's, he was a carpenter, right? And he died by the... Yes, I, I read that, too. <laughs> I saw that as well. Well... In celebration of Jesus' sacrifice, we're going to talk about robots. And the first robots that we'll talk about... <clears throat> oh, man. I really yelled at the cats too much today. The first robots we'll talk about are Walmart robots. <laughs> Walmart plans to add thousands of robot helpers to U.S. stores. I thought this was going to be like the useless robots that just wander around the other supermarkets and, and warn of spills, but no. Super useful. These are yeah. store, like, stock robots. Well, this guy's a We're sweet. not even cute. This guy cleans. He's a floor scrubber. And then they've also got, uh, oh, they don't have pictures of the other one. The stalker robot. They got the, well, the <clears throat> they have a robot that when things come off the truck and the pallets, the robot scans them and decides what part of the store they need to go to then you've got the shelf scanning robot who's deciding if the shelves need to be restocked from the things that the other robot just scanned and then there was one other one do you remember the other one no the floor robot but uh, the floor cleaner there was a fourth one yeah i don't it might have been the one that four horsemen of the apocalypse (laughs) (laughs) yeah basically now they bring up here that they were like hey no associates the associates love them. They haven't cost any associates their jobs. They help them do things more efficiently. But I don't think it's the associates that clean the floors. I think like a mercenary team comes in overnight and does that. Oh, clever. No. Clever yeah. move, Walmart. Oh, is that not true, Chris? No, I'm pretty sure that they do. Because I've seen people like Walmart, people in Walmart uniforms mopping. Cleaning a spill while you're there. Yeah, that's true. I guess I've not seen them actually the, like zamboning like, the floor. Have you ever been in there at like 3 a.m. and they actually will put up the caution tape and close off sections? No, because I'm not a degenerate. Well, <laughs> those do not look like Walmart associates who are doing that. They look like migrant workers. Those are specially Whoa. trained Zamboni operators. Yeah, and they also talk about uh, cleaning the bathroom. I'm almost positive the associates don't clean the bathrooms. So, I, the, I don't know. The grocery store I worked at, we did clean the bathrooms. We, we had to do constant checks on them every hour. We definitely have Walmart employees or former Walmart employees in our chat engagement challenge. That's true. Yeah, we can, we can find out. Are for sure. our suspicions true? But anyway, uh, it seems like it's going to be overall better for the shopper because these guys are constantly cleaning and they talk about cleaning that bathroom several times a day, which you probably need in a Walmart bathroom. They need to decorate the floor cleaning one that they had in the picture. Like, what's the name? Snufflepugus? Snufflepugus? That's it. And he's got like the big eyelashes and stuff. Think how cute that would be. There's no title. You can't even see the title. Wow. Oh, to man. continue reading, enter your email address. I don't want to show the picture. Uh, you'll, you'll have to read the title while they look at the paywall, and then yeah. we'll show the picture. At the MIT Technology Review, where they demand your email address, a robot has figured out how to use tools. So it wasn't explicitly written to use tools, but it was like looking at, it's like a robotic vision system and manipulation system. It's using a bowl. But it, what, what is he using it for? Just, He's just like stabbing things with it. It's, <laughs> pick up this glove. It's moving things around. What book is that? You think I can't see the title? Uh, it's impossible to read. Probably an Asimov book if they're if they're getting their irony correct. But this is one of those learning algorithms that they're not really giving it anything to go on. I think they did have one that they taught some stuff and one they just let learn. And they talked about how it would use tools, but sometimes in an unexpected way. One of them thought that they gave it the command to just like clear the deck, like get all these items off the deck, and then the item it chose to do that with water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so it just sprayed everything with water? No, it picked it up no, and just, used it to, yeah. to sweep everything off because that was bigger than its claw. Oh, okay. Which kind of works. Yeah. And then it does this with the bowl, and it's kind of like, I, I don't know what you're going for, claw. But that's cool. You got to think in terms of, you know, learning evolution. The first guys working with sticks, probably idiots. Yeah. Probably didn't do anything useful with them. And then they learned to sharpen them to a point. And then all of a sudden we've got computers. And then this show. Oh, maybe we should just go back. <laughs> and then eventually the black hole. Oh, I forgot about that. I love last Chris's episode. fear of the black. <laughs> that you, that the fear of the black hole is even more irrational than the fear of velociraptors. I I I don't really fear black holes, but I think they're interesting, like most people do. But I am actually a little bit 
afraid of raptors. There's some sort of deep seated phobia from when I was a kid. The universe was created, which was widely regarded as a bad, bad move. move. <laughs> Someone needs to make one of those, uh, like the the cartoons where Krista is the the girl in The Shining, and the black hole is coming through the, <laughs> the axe hole. Someone will do that. They've done some good photoshops of us. Oh, uh, self driving cars. It, Elon Musk says we're we're there. You're gonna have it. Not only are you gonna have a self driving car, it's gonna be out earning money when you're not when you're asleep. It's gonna be the hardest working self driving car you've ever seen. Google has Waymo, and they say it's ready. We're doing it. But other people are saying, uh, wait a minute. Ford's CEO has said the company overestimated self-driving cars. So there's this really great graph where it's like, you know, they're at the trial of disillusionment. That's where Ford is right now. They're they're going to bottom out and then hit the plateau of enlightenment. But they're 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 on the other side of self-driving I'm cars. I'm imagining, the, sorry, the CEO of Ford like. He's on this like call with this journalist talking about this, and he's like, "Yeah, I just don't know if it's gonna work out." And then like through his window, you can see like a self-driving car just banging into a, a wall repeatedly. People are screaming, things there's are on fire. Guy, there's a guy trapped under it. <laughs> he's like, "I just don't know if it's gonna work out." And the journalist is like, "Oh, I'm sorry to hear that." And then he hangs we up should, and just watches from his window. We should perhaps temper our expectations as they pull the guy literally apart, trying to get it's like it's just his viscera is all over the. Be a good comic. <laughs> it, tur- it turns out the Ford doesn't even have like a lot of the data or technology to do this. So yeah, they're it's a saying problem. He he kept going back to it's like it's going to be incredible, eventually, but definitely not right now. Forget it right now. <laughs> of course, this matches Screams. what we've seen with the Tesla stuff, where you know it's just running into walls and shit, and maybe we're running a little too enthusiastically into the arms of self driving <laughs> when it's not there yet. But, as you say, that is the fastest way to get there. It's just throw caution to the wind. <laughs> Some people are going to get lead poisoning. Uh, Some call people back are going to die. Yeah. Sometimes they die. <laughs> mm. We shouldn't laugh about that, but that's, that's what happens. Yeah, that's well, you know what? Gonna happen, One sure. thing that we should laugh at, and we constantly laugh at, and get a good feeling about you know their their bad luck and the horrible situation that they're in, is Australia. But this week... Maybe they're laughing at us. Google's wing drones approved to make public deliveries in Australia. That probably is good. Yeah. 18-month trial and 3,000 deliveries. Look at there that. it is. Oh, wow. Look at it. It's got it's, its like little, it's bringing a baby. It's, yeah, like a it's got its little box. And then uh, they got some pictures, I think, Even if it dropped here. that box uh, without a parachute, that's still, that's still less distance than UPS throws it. So it's probably fine. I eliminated. Of, of course, course, there's yeah, a picture of kangaroos. kangaroos. Wow. What a racist depiction. There was a different story that had some better pictures. Uh, I like it looks like they're interviewing the <laughs> what do you guys think of the drone delivery Sir, program? Have you seen that video of a guy uh jumping out of an airplane parachuting? Switch switch the screen. And uh oops and the uh kangaroo meets him when he lands and whips his ass. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, a real man. it's like playing PUBG again. I think that might happen to some some, packages. some wing packages. <laughs> Did I accidentally show this one? Yes, you did. Oh, Aww. man. Our next story is about legal weed. I was going to say, Krista, how excited would you be if you could just get a shipping container that sits outside your house and constantly generates weed? <laughs> I, uh, I don't smoke, so I'm not that excited. Uh, after NJ legalizes weed, that's New Jersey, these tech wizards want to grow tons of it here with robots. So they're talking about how it's actually difficult to, to grow marijuana, I guess. Maybe in that part of the country. And, you know, uh, I've always heard that it's not. Thus, the name weed. Like it grows. It like grows a weed. well here, but I don't know about New Jersey. Yeah, Jersey's not. It's supposed to be a a you know subtropical type climate almost. Here's the inside of one of these containers, and fungus uh, is a problem apparently. But the, of course, there's a lot of people growing weed indoors. I mean, that's certainly not a new thing. There's a whole industry based on it. But apparently, the big thing here is they have a camera system. That looks at it every 10 seconds, and it knows what good weed looks like and what bad weed looks like. And if there are diseases, which I thought was the most impressive, because the camera catches it so early that there's only about 5% wastage due to any kind of plant disease or or plant problem, and typically there's 15% plus wastage. They're also able to grow it faster because they figured out exactly 
how quickly they can grow the plant without overloading the plant. Yeah. 12 tons. If you have an average like warehouse size building and you stack them up in it, 12 tons of dried weed. 12 tons. This is a product that you sell by the gram. <laughs> Somebody's going to make a lot of money. Uh, well, everyone's uh, the whole big thing now that I see everywhere is CBD oil. Mm. Like literally on flyers, like in muffins and coffee, it's like, oh, get some CBD oil. And I'm like, is it really? Is that necessary? But but that's... I, it's more of a medical thing. I yeah, think. It's supposed to be. But... There's no high in that because THC yeah. is what gets you high. CBD is like the anti-cancer portion of it, right? Well, the thing is, is so all, the reason I saw it was because there's a ton of sites on Site Inspire, which is one of the sites I browse pretty often, and they're all CBD oil sites, and they all claim different things, like, it'll cure your cancer, you'll feel less depressed, it'll save your marriage. Like We've got a bottle that I found in the wall that's like, you know, Dr. McCormick's miracle juice that's like, it's good for a cough and listlessness. Yeah. and well, that's that, exactly what CBD oil websites are but, saying, so I don't know what's true about it. That bottle you found, the stuff in that was probably super effective. <laughs> Yeah, because you should it was take cocaine. One of the ingredients does say, I mean, it's an empty bottle, but one of the ingredients is literally cocaine. Yeah. Ooh. That should be on the set back there. I think it's... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's in like the basement. A, it's real stinky. Anti-inflammatory, maybe, is like the big quality CBD is supposed to have, right? Mm. And we all are inflamed in some way. Yeah. <laughs> so, we all did some sort of exercise this probably, weekend. Probably so. could use... No, I mean, just like uh, your average person walking around. Something. Uh, something's fuego? going on. Is that how you... That's how you say it. Fuego is flame, right? Spanish. I don't know. We're we're way off the rails. <laughs> well, let's talk about AI and what it can do for us. So we know that it can read our MRIs. It can read our lung X-rays. It can look at our bone X-rays. It can predict uh, certain things about our lifestyle and tell us to go seek medical care. It can tell heads of state that they're sick when they're not. And one more thing to add to the list: AI predicts hospital readmission rates from clinical notes. This is kind of. A long way of saying that the AI can predict when the doctors were wrong. That, uh, it's a little scary, though. I guess the insurance company would want to do everything they can to keep you from readmitting. <laughs> but the hospital themselves, wouldn't. isn't that just repeat business? Yeah. It's like uh, the, the AI concludes that every patient from Dr. Nick is going to be readmitted. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bad news for Dr. Nick. <laughs> or good news. It's like, in terms of, you know, your actual uh, performance... Low, but in terms of profit, off the charts. <laughs> uh, I remember we reported on this. It's been a, I think it's been six months. So like, yeah, about six months ago, we talked about these guys. It was like, well, do you think they'll really be effective? Well, guess what? These tree planting drones are firing seed missiles to restore the world's forests. It's been, <laughs> yeah, it's been six months, and they're growing. They're growing a lot of trees really quickly. This is going to be actually very effective. This is uh, one of the girls who came up with this program. That's a woman right before she gets hit by a seed missile. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, there's so many jokes there. I Uh, I said it, and then I was like, oh. Here is one of the, this is one of the six months ago trees. This is it now. So, good job. Nice. So, all all that we needed for all the reforestation was just for people to plant, like, okay, it's cool if you're going to deforest this area. Just plant some damn trees. Well, they say that's not all they're doing. They send the drones out. But without education, the people in these communities just kill the little trees. Because they don't realize. They're probably just like, oh, it's weeds. So they actually have to go around and go to all these little places like, hey, by the way, we're shooting seed missiles. This is what it's going to look like. Please don't kill it. Mm. Well, that one made it. So good job. You can see just out of frame, there's a farmer who's like, I can't wait to tear that down. <laughs> he's, got he's got a, a pair of shears. He's like got a go. spade in his hand. It's like, I'm going to fuck that tree up. <laughs> uh, and now into the design portion of which Krista has only read 50% of the articles. Well, I saw the other one and it wasn't that exciting. You she added the saw other it one. 30 seconds ago when yeah. I loaded it into the thing. But this one. This one's bizarre. It's almost, one, it almost made it into nonsense. Today's award for most nonsensely named company. Well, not even nonsense. It, just bad. It's bad. Terrible. It's very, everyone in the comments on this article, too, was like, oh, no. <laughs> Lowlyware has redesigned. Is and, that how you think it's pronounced? <laughs> I, I kind of made a weird face there because I don't really know, but it definitely say, has a connotation. I would say Lollyware. I don't, mm, I don't know. Did, no one, did no one tell them what that means? Yeah, there, one of the comments, someone was like, this is why 
companies need to have some sort of like marketing or internet person just to tell them you can't name your company this. This is a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. The first yeah. time. It's well, it's, so if you're sitting here confused about what this company does, they make straws that literally disappear so that way you can have out of you know, seaweed that's yeah. what the, that's what the green line is meant to be but uh, again this is supposed to be an eco-friendly company why would you use toxic waste green as your brand color scroll down some more because there's a picture of like a business card keep going a little bit more here we go this picture does not look like a healthy ocean this looks that looks fine it's mm, blue it looks awful and with that, that toxic waste green i don't know about all that but it's not toxic waste green it's turtle green one hundred percent plastic free mouse. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, yeah, this is terrible. Lollywear, lollywear. Mm. Desire to disappear. <laughs> it's so bad. I mean, it's I so bad. When I first saw that, I thought it was one of those uh, video game company that makes those Steam hentai games that you see every day. <laughs> lollywear. <laughs> If this had been posted on April 1st, it wouldn't have surprised me, but, I mean, here we are. <laughs> Would you carry that tote bag anywhere? This is a thing on branding Ask websites. People will do tote bags of their brand, and I don't really know, like, who's that for, but maybe oh. people carry totes for a straw company. My apologies if you are Exhibit A in the board meeting of why your company needs to pick a new name and logo. Oh. Brilliant concept, an application of a wonderful initiative. It says... Ivan Kalsarov, who's never been on the internet. <laughs> There's a, quite a few more comments where, like, who who named this? <laughs> Desire to disappear. He uh, pictured, like, a family. It's such a good product. That's why it's frustrating. A family looking at a picture of their daughter and, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and this is the one that Krista, despite trying to have her finger on the pulse of the design world, somehow missed the biggest event. What are you doing? I'm putting my hand up because, listen, for a web designer, most clients, literally 99.9% of people are not going to know that you have Helvetica well, and it's just taking up space you, on your server. Why don't you tell them what it is? Monotype launches the first redesign in 35 years of the world's most ubiquitous font, Helvetica. Krista, this is older than you are. This it is. This is big. It's actually quite a bit older than me. Look at it. I see it. Tell us why it's good. For most people, it doesn't really make a difference. It's not worth the licensing fee. I like how the it eyes is, fall it is on is nice the mouse cursor. Oh, creative boom. <laughs> yeah, I, it is, uh, Helvetica is nice because it has a lot of weights. But for most people, it's so expensive. I don't recommend it for most clients unless they like really, really want Helvetica. But look at this water bottle. Hang on. Look at that. Wow. That's wow. big. I do think, I like I said, I didn't read this article, but I, that's like looks like they've changed the terminals of some of the characters, but it's so subtle. I mean, I don't know. That's the beauty. If of you're it. if you're like a typographer, it's probably a big deal. Otherwise, <laughs> ha ha. You can't tell the difference between Ariel and Helvetica. Ha ha ha. But you can. <laughs> it's gatekeeping. <laughs> how do you do you not? Know, I told you before the, we started, Wendell. How do you start tell the difference between Ariel and Helvetica? One thing you can look for is inside the letter A because it's a teardrop shape in Hel in Helvetica, and but not Ariel. Yes. But also the terminals, and because they'll be at weird angles in like aerial. But if Helvetica, you get a business straight. card, and the A's don't have teardrops in them, just throw it away. Just <laughs> rip it in half, burn it. Also, if it's not, what is it? What's the thing for? It's like you know, bond forty pound with the the fabric cross hatch. Then something, something. You need an axe and a lot of plastic. Activision. <laughs> anyway, they're doing something. I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not going to acknowledge the horrible <laughs> pop culture references. Activision is doing something. Krista, this should be close to your heart because, first of all, we talked about this the other you're day. You're addicted to Overwatch. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the two year plan. No. Anyway, continue. Oh, okay. Am I going to read it? Activision Blizzard is reportedly giving its employees gift cards in exchange for anonymized pregnancy tracking data. That's going to be a yikes for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. We it, talked it, about this it's app. It's optional, but it's a dollar a day. We talked about this app before. What Was it Facebook? Yeah. It's o o v something. It's, it's a People play use on. it to track their fertility. Ovia. Ovia, yeah. So Ovia tracks your fertility and, you know, your, your cycle and all that stuff. And for whatever reason, and, of course, the reason should be pretty obvious if you think about it a little bit, it's got to do with, 
you know, tracking your ability to work and your insurance and all that stuff. Anyway, Activision Blizzard, if you're a woman and you will use Ovia and let them look at the data, they'll give you a gift card. For a dollar a day. Every day that you use it. Nice. And enter your stuff. What a... The reporter was like, isn't that creepy? And the response from Activision seemed to be, well, this isn't the first time we've done this, and it's a totally <laughs> opt-in program. They use the, we're not putting a gun to anybody's headline. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, what if you use this data to eventually be like, oh, this woman's likely to try to get pregnant now? Let's see if we can cut her out so we don't get hit with a lawsuit for cutting her maternity. I mean, I don't, maybe they probably won't do that, but what if they did? Yeah. Well, Never know. Yeah. Or what if, like, you know, there's some kind of weird discrepancy, like you've got ovarian cancer. And they're like, ooh. Ooh, yeah. That's going to be an insurance claim. Uh, let's terminate that employee. It's a little, let's give them a, little weird. a poor performance review. We've got to cover our bases here. And speaking of lactation... The cows. Now, we did talk about this before when it was just an idea, and some absolute madman has actually done it. They've connected the cows with 5G. 5G connected cows test milking parlor of the future. This is in England. So what happens is the cows come up to the computer, and the computer recognizes them by face, lets them in, gives them a food reward, and robotically milks them. Now, when I read that, the first thing that came to my mind as a pet owner is... What would stop the cows from coming before they're ready to be milked just for yeah. the food reward? I guess I assume that would be painful for them if they don't if they're not ready to be milked. Mm, could be. Yeah. But yeah, you just get robot milked and you decide and then it keeps track of who's been milked. I'm sure there's all sorts of beautiful analytics that you can look at it, see which cows are producing and which one are ready for the dog. I bet food Blizzard's line. actually getting ready to roll this out in their offices too. If you'll pump for them, they'll give you two dollars a day. <laughs> Movia. <laughs> the uh you know all the cows have checked in except for bessie bessie hasn't been milked where's she at she opted out of the program <laughs> she's, she's a selling black market at the side of the fence <laughs> on pasteurized milk uh, the it's you see this pretty commonly if you go to malls and places like that and kiosks a lot of them run windows and bad things happen to windows it reboots it blue screens that shows up on the kiosk. It can be embarrassing, but perhaps more embarrassing when it's a giant bill. The BT Tower has broadcast an error message to the nation all weekend as Windows displays an admin's shame. It was like the Windows boot up screen. Yeah, it wasn't like, really an error, although their disk probably did fail. Yeah, it's like something. I like yeah. the sub headlines, like metaphor for Brexit. It's like, okay. <laughs> That's like their version of Trump. You have to mention it mm -hmm. in every article. Probably Windows 7, maybe? Might have been Vista. I think they mentioned it was seven, and uh, yeah, they so something happened to their boot drive, and it went it rebooted and went back to the select. <laughs> what a time to be alive! Yes, reboot the skyscraper, please. This the LED signs have gone offline. The really embarrassing thing is, is that you attempted a British accent. Yeah. Oh, that was terrible. Uh, the really embarrassing thing is they mentioned it took like a day and a half for somebody to show up and fix it. It was the weekend. Yeah, for real though. I mean, that would be expensive. You got a license you know, to work on this. Jumbotron, sir. <laughs> you're, uh, Everybody has to have a TV license in the UK. You're, you're going to pay me a lot to come out on my day off to come <laughs> fix your, your tower. We all have had our time with Battle Royale. We here started with PUBG. And, uh, right, press F. We tried the other ones, never could regain the magic. Well, yeah. would, was the original DayZ the first Battle Royale? Well, we didn't play it Battle Royale. I mean, I, we did try Arma. Arma really didn't do it for me, though. Like, I, I didn't get the, the, the fever again until PUBG. But we've all dreamed, what would it really be like? How If I really had to do this, what would happen? And I'll tell you personally, all that running, mm -mm. <laughs> not for me. I'd be holed up. The first gun I found, I'd just be hiding in the corner. Of course, then the the wall would get me circle, but anyway yeah. if you're one of those people who think to yourself i would like to experience this for real it's really good news anonymous millionaire is hiring a game maker for a real life battle royale so the millionaire has an island he just needs a game designer it's literally the plot of the hunger games movie the first one in real life with airsoft guns yikes you're gonna you're gonna play the game for 12 hours and then you're gonna camp for 12 hours and they're gonna provide the camping gear but it's gonna be 100 people on an island Sounds fun. Uh, it could it could be a television show, I suppose. Yeah, but it'd be tough to follow the action. Yeah. 
And yeah. let's say you film it with drones. Just look for the house or the structure with a drone circling it. There's somebody <laughs> yeah. in there. How do but, they do that in the Hunger Games? And they just have cameras on everything. Yeah. There were and cameras built just... into the trees because the technology was so uh, sophisticated. And if they got bored, I think they would like trigger events to happen in the arena. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know how you would. I guess they'd have to do that. But this is airsoft and you wear a special body armor that detects the airsoft hits. See, body armor kind of ruins the game though because then everyone becomes a bullet sponge. Well, but it detects the, the hits so it's like you're out if you take a certain amount of hits. I was making hits. a joke. Because we hate armor. Oh, right. right. PUBG. Okay. <laughs> it's never, never mind. I'm sorry. I missed well, it. Well, speaking of islands, let's talk about an island who maybe they've, they've done something that we all have wanted to see, but the reality of it is a little scary. Daily Current Fairs brings us this story. Not affairs. Fairs which is perhaps foreshadowing for the grammar in the rest of the article. How dare you judge that? <laughs> <laughs> An island where punishment of taking a selfie is the death. That is the headline. It's a good translation there. <laughs> and this was April 9th, so I don't think this is an April Fool's article. It is not well written. It doesn't have a lot of information, but they blame it on pilots. So I think, piecing this together, I think the idea is a lot of planes land on this island. And the pilots have been distracted by the flashes on the ground from people taking selfies, which seems weird at night, maybe. And so the government is just like, no, we're not tolerating this at all. And they've now made that a violation that could actually carry the death penalty. I don't think that you'd get that, but why risk it? Yeah. Why not just kill them right out, right, you know? It's an island in Thailand. <laughs> I believe it's pronounced Thailand. <laughs> Was that supposed to rhyme? Island in Thailand. That could be a song. A crappy one, but yeah. <clears throat> the Chinese, as we know, they love to track things. They really like tracking things from their students to their dissidents to people who jaywalk to people who don't pay their debts. And now you just add another one to the list. These Chinese sanitation workers will have to wear location tracking bracelets now. The uh, They've scaled back a little bit, though. The location tracking bracelets would also monitor how much they were working and would say, please return to work if they were in one area too long. 20 minutes. They've scaled that back a little bit, and now it's just going to report their location. Which, you know, when they get back to base, if they were in one area for 20 minutes, <laughs> yeah. someone is going to say something like, you need to not do that. So, it's funny because the advocacy groups spoke out about this, and then there were headlines about it. Then they scaled it back to take out the one little, like you're talking about the 20 minute part. And all the headlines were advocacy, advocacy groups have won again. They've gotten what they wanted from the government. <laughs> and they were like, wait, no, that's, that's not true at all. It, this is still terrible. I'm focused on this image here. Cause it's like the workers and that's just a picture of birds. Well, that's the camera. No, I like to imagine it's the birds who are the workers. You think the birds tracked. are picking up, well, they probably, those birds are picking up trash. I'm sure all day long. They probably dump it again later, but. Yeah. Doesn't Disney have birds trained to pick up cigarette butts at this point? Here's a Probably. picture of the the bracelet. It's pretty big. Look, I mean, think how cool you'd look with one of those on your arm. So those sanitation workers probably don't get state-of-the-art technology. These are literally the child monitors from five years ago that they just didn't sell. Yeah, and so here is the their ability to track them over an area. That's a lot of sanitation workers. Oh, well. I guess the trash gets picked up on time, right? When you think about the space station, I foolishly imagined a very sterile, dead environment because, of course, you know there's there's no life up there other than us and the things we bring with us. But apparently, I was dead wrong. The International Space Station is a cesspool of bacteria and fungi. When you think about it, though, I mean that kind of makes sense. It's like, ew! I bet that is probably full of nastiness. I don't. I bet they don't take Clorox wipes up there with them. No. <laughs> Well, that's probably their only way of bathing is some kind of wipe. That's true. Don't uh, don't things mutate really fast in space, too? I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> we take things up there to study it like this, but these were not things we took on purpose. This is just stuff that's coming out of your skin and your butt and your mouth. Your butt. And it's, <laughs> your once butt it gets in there, floating around. you may leave, but all of your funk stays on the station. There's no escape. We literally created the Andromeda strain. Eh, could be. 
I imagine, uh, of course, when we abandon that thing, we'll just let it burn in the atmosphere, right? Yeah. So probably nothing will survive. It's probably not going to spray astronaut poop over eastern Montana. Let's hope. Probably. Let's hope that happens. <laughs> oh, buy an ad removal pass. I won't. <laughs> Across the U.S., popular video doorbells are making videos of their own thefts. So people will run up to people's houses and steal the video doorbell, which is still connected to their accounts. So you can see the video of the theft. It makes sense because they are worth hundreds of dollars, but I think the activation process is probably tied probably to a specific account. Yeah, yeah, it's married to a specific, so they're going to know that it's stolen. But I guess if you're, you know, Jones and for meth, you're not thinking that through. And, it doesn't and if help. you don't know a lot about tech and you're just trying to sell, like buy something like that. Yeah, and these things are mounted externally with screws that can be taken out. So they are. Watch just like the it. copper wiring in everybody's houses. Well, a little it's, it's easier. It's just behind the drywall. It's yeah, easy. Easier to access than the, the copper wire. Although, and it's self connected to some wire. So maybe you can pull that out too. Get a little extra. Yeah, bonus. Why not? <laughs> This one is, uh, I put it in nonsense, it doesn't really count as nonsense, but it doesn't go with any of our other uh, sections. So this one, Krista, you should replace your dread fear of the black holes. It makes room for this. <laughs> makes room for the black plague oh, no. instead. So uh, it turns out that... We don't know that's what it is. Deadly germs and lost cures, a mysterious infection spanning the globe in a climate of secrecy. So the New York Times is talking about this uh, fungus that is highly resistant to everything. A fungus among us. There is a fungus among us. And they talk about one of the hospitals uh, aerosolized uh, hydrogen peroxide. And like there was this one hospital room that was so badly infected that they aerosolized hydrogen peroxide and baked to that room to get in every nook and cranny to like Kill it. disinfect the room. And it killed everything in the room except for the fungus. Yeah. And they can kill it in small batches. But it grows so rapidly, and it just spreads through the place. Now, here's the terrifying part about it. This is not a one-off event, and it's not recent. These we're talking about 2015, 2016. It's all been kept a secret because the hospital doesn't want you to know that there's this horrible thing all through the hospital that they can't do anything about. So no one's been talking about it. How many deaths are attributed to it, though? Well, it doesn't kill you outright. Imagine it. it's like, what, a secondary infection on top of whatever else you if, have? If you've got a weakened immune system, yeah. Generally, somebody who's already, weak, like there was one man who was in his 90s. He brought it in, and it spread from his room to the entire wing. But he eventually died. Oh, but he was going to die real. anyway. And you can't kill it. They got nothing in. And they're blaming the overuse of antibiotics and antifungals and stuff like that. The antifungals seem to be linked to um, pesticide use. So, like... It may be that it's not antifungal in like a clinical setting, but actually antifungals that are used on plants, which is an interesting take. Krista, how ironic if it's the mushrooms that kill you. The mushrooms that you love. I saw a huge, I don't know what kind of mushroom it was. This is not related. I went on a hike yesterday, saw a giant mushroom, and it was like the size of my hand twice. It's huge. Pics or it didn't happen. I do have pics of it with a whistle for like a size comparison. Not a banana? No, I don't have a banana with me. <laughs> You're not even prepared to hike. <laughs> I actually ate a banana on the way to the trail, so I guess. Here is, well, you could have used the skin. I should have kept it for a measuring device. Here's a story that another one that I had to make sure this was published on April 8th. So I'm fairly certain this is not a April Fool's joke, but it is disgusting. <laughs> Cadbury and Heinz have teamed up to create the cream egg flavored mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine mixing that in with your tuna. Mm. I don't know what you're supposed to put this on. Bread? <laughs> Bread? I, so the flesh of your enemies? I don't. Vinegar and Cadbury egg. This is some British stuff. I mean, oh. <laughs> but they say it's real. Uh, you can't buy it yet. But they are going to have a special, um, like Easter tasting of it. Oh, what so, a blessing that will be. Yeah, nice. Look forward to that. <laughs> this is how the uh, the zombie outbreak happens. Like anybody that eats this turns into a zombie. But who's going to eat it? The fungus will eat it and it'll use it again. <laughs> That'll be the thing that can kill the fungus. Oh, wow. Uh, That'd be a twist no one saw coming. Mad Mike Hughes, if you're saying, 
Who? Who is that? Well, let me remind you, he's the guy who keeps trying to launch himself into various parts of the sky to prove that the Earth is flat. Oh, yes, I remember this guy. Mm, yeah. Turns out he actually uh, managed the last launch. I, remember, I think we talked about it, but we didn't follow up. He hurt himself a little bit, but for the most part, he did it. Not enough to actually deter him. Well, not enough to deter him, nor to determine, is the Earth round or flat? So, what's he going to do? Try it again, but higher. Flat Earth Movement's Rocket Man plans to travel to space and Antarctica. This time, he hopes to travel 62.8 miles above the planet. And he said, and I quote, ah, if I don't get government clearance, I'm going to go out and do it on the ocean. Mm. So, here's his rocket. That doesn't look space worthy. <laughs> <laughs> that looks, yeah. That looks like a little bit of air will just blow that right apart. I'm, I'm, well, there's going to be something on here. I'm pretty sure the the thing that I saw in Star Trek First Contact is the minimum thing that is s- space worthy, and this ain't it. So, uh, once again, of course, Star <laughs> Trek is exactly the reality of space flight. Uh, he, uh, the idea, he says, I'm going to put cameras on this thing, and everyone's afraid for me to do this because. That's the only way that we're ever going to find out the truth if, is if I do this. As if we have not launched things <laughs> into space covered in cameras. The truth is out there, right? I feel like Elon Musk, like if Elon Musk could refrain from Twitter, he could use that fine money to just fly this guy down, stick him on a Falcon rocket and be like, let's go up. Let's have some fun. <laughs> but even if we did that, I don't think we could silence the Flat Earthers because apparently this guy is not well liked in the Flat Earth community. Because he's trying to find proof for their weird beliefs. I don't know, but what, for whatever reason, he is, uh, uh, you know, uh, you're either on it, you, you love him or you hate him if you're a flat earther. Hmm. Whenever the reporter called, he was apparently adding decals to the rocket, so there's that. That's good. I wish him luck. I'd like to see him take it up. For 62 miles in that, it sounds like a death You put a coexist sticker on it? Like I said, I'd like to see that. <laughs> I'd love uh, to watch it. This one's amazing. Wow. 80 degrees, Krista. There's no storm right now. I'm so confused. Uh, Krista's dying for rain. Well, I'm just confused because Chris Bailey, that liar, told me it's supposed (laughs) to rain today, and it's not. And I'm confused. It was a conspiracy. He wanted the sunshine for himself. He did. (laughs) He's bottling it right now. Well, now it's like windy as hell, but... Anyway, uh, this is from a Kentucky website. It has no business being a Kentucky website. They're just they're rebottling the news, much like Chris Bailey is rebottling the sunshine. <laughs> but they're talking about a criminal, a robot criminal. Oregon deputies raid a bathroom with guns drawn and find a trapped Roomba. Roomba. So this lady called 911 freaking out because there was somebody in her bathroom and it was locked from the inside and she could see shadows moving around under the door. So the police were there in a minute. That's a pretty good police response. That's a pretty good response time. Unfortunately, it was a Roomba. It was a Roomba. So, oops. They burst into the bathroom, guns drawn, and it was just a Roomba. They just just shoot at it for like 10 straight seconds. Like, (laughs) fill it full of lead. This begs a couple of questions. The first being, how did the door get locked? And the second being, how did the Roomba get in there? (laughs) Well, I can see the Roomba getting I don't know how it locked the door, unless it was doing something terrible inside there. What if the what if it went into the bathroom and like got behind the door and then just closed the door through its natural vacuuming motions? What they don't know is that minutes before they got there, the room was in there shooting up heroin. <laughs> He's got track marks on his little rim. I like the picture that they did here. Most wanted captured. That's nice. When they when they printed the debug log from the room, but it said, "Why was I built to feel pain?" That's why I had to do the heroin. Also, Chris, to look at the sidebar here. Chris Bailey's fast cast. <laughs> Chris Bailey's here to taunt us. He was all like, oh, tornadoes tomorrow, storms, and it's like 80 degrees and sunny. I'm confused. Chris Bailey lied to me. <coughs> Why did you all lie right. to me, Chris Bailey? Well, it's been another week of the news. That's all we got. Thanks for hanging out. That's it. We'll see you next week. Have a good Easter.